Okay, I decided I wanted to add this up so we could start out by saying here's our total debt number. The overall total of the entire debt that we owe is that number right there. The total, including the house. Wait, what? What were you expecting to be higher or lower? I'm expecting there to be a whole number missing out of there. Like, did you type, is that one extra five right there? No. So, the total amount of debt in general. <sighs> wardrobe change. <laughs> Continuing with our wardrobe change. Straight from the last video to here, that's how you do it. <laughs> I mean, y'all have watched it anyway if I was still wearing the same shirt, wouldn't you? Hey, we're back here on the next day. Just kidding, it's the same day. Shirt. Welcome back to the Vlogcast. Vlogcast, Cullen and Katie's uh, budget disaster. Series. Debt disaster. Part what is it? Four. We have trouble with money lately. <sighs> money. We're broke. Money sucks. That's a joke. Money's <laughs> stupid. Money's <laughs> dumb. Money is the root of all evil. That's not true. It is That's, not true. It's not true. It it's is not the true. love of money is the root uh, of all evil. Trick question. Money isn't dumb. Trick question. People are dumb. People aren't dumb. People make mistakes. There we go. Now we can see your eyes. And we're not dumb. We are dumb. But we just make, we're still learning and we had to go through an experience. Debt is dumb. Cash is king. And the paid off no mortgage is taking the status symbol of the BMW as the whatever day Ramsey uh, says. Dollar car rental facility <laughs> or something yes. like that. So speaking oh of gosh. paid off home mortgage, ours is definitely not paid off. Um, and it is definitely not on a 15 year fixed. It's definitely not what Dave Ramsey said to do about a house. So we just decided to tell all on our house right now. Is that like... Is this a bad idea considering we're also in the process of selling it? Like, isn't this the stuff you're not supposed to tell people? But why not? Why, why is would, there any yeah, reason well, it to keep a secret or hide anything? What somebody does with their money or whatever they want to do doesn't have any impact. Uh, you know what I mean? Right. Like, like, what if we... If they have the money to buy it... What if we paid, better, like, all cash for $50,000 and that's all we have in this house. Like, what's that matter on the person buying it, right, you know? Right. I don't know, if we're, if this is a bad decision to make this video, I'm sorry, I feel like it's a better decision to be honest and be real and do what we can to help other people because that's what we have found we're here for on yeah, this Yeah, especially platform. after reading all the freaking comments, like, had no idea the impact it would have on a lot of the people watching you and him and her and y'all and them and they's. Whatever you choose to go by. <laughs> um, but I mean, I think it's just, we, I don't know. It's, it's, a, it's an interesting place we're at. We obviously don't know everything. I think we're in a place where we kind of, we knew what we should have been doing, we weren't doing it. We don't know everything, we don't have all the answers, but we hope to get you guys thinking about it and take you along on the journey so that you can learn along with us. Experience is wisdom. Is that even a quote? I don't know if it is. Look it up. Hashtag whoever it was. If it's it was. not, put Cullen after it. <laughs> well, it reminds me, uh, there was one day we were telling Gaines about something and she said, why? And we we're like, because we know the answer. It's healthy for you to why eat. like 17 times. Or yeah, like it's healthy for you to eat this because blah, blah, blah. And then it made me just start thinking about like how we are constantly, even to this day, right now, learning about different things by experiencing the good and the bad. You know, you are always like, how do your parents know everything? Or how did they not get into debt? And this, that, and the other, but probably more than likely at one point they did. And they learned from that and figured out a way to work around it. And I could be wrong, but I don't think, I mean, well, I don't think I am wrong in this. Nobody's ever done everything perfectly. I think it's just, the differences between people of how far down the imperfect messed up road you let yourself get i think everybody has eaten too much drank too much spent too much but it's the difference of somebody who spends five hundred dollars too much and then goes whoa hang on and then gets himself back on track versus somebody who spends five hundred thousand dollars too much and then six hundred thousand six hundred and a cool, yeah, six, a lot, yeah, a lot of thousands. A lot more than that. Um, <laughs> so, well, and that's a, an interesting point because one of the things, one of the common denominators in all of these motivational speakers and podcasts and Dave Ramsey's that we listen to 
is every single one of them hit rock bottom mm -hmm. went into bankruptcy Dave Ramsey they all about, talk about how they were broke they and like, had to experience that almost deathly feeling in order to get the determination and motivation to pick themselves back up and, and then several become of them greater than they ever were. Several of them after having come out of it, like Dave Ramsey even says how he was previously like a millionaire in doing his real estate stuff and then he crashed and burned. So it's not like people who just kind of started from nothing and did everything perfect. Like it's so many people get, that, get all the get money, that, get, get all the, the stuff. Get all the buying. Uh, and like he even yeah. at the time like thought he was managing stuff well and then it all fell apart as he wasn't. And then that's when he rose back up. You know, we're I'm at a point of, I get it when you're standing at a gas station and your car ha is like been on empty and it's saying you have like two more miles to drive mm -hmm. and you got four more miles till you go home. And this is an actual story from the summer. And I was like calling Cullen, like I literally, like I pulled up to the gas station and I said, crap, let me check the bank account. And there was like a dollar in the bank account, mm -hmm. literally. And I was like, seriously, what do I actually do? At the time there was money in our business account, mm -hmm. but I didn't have access to like use that money because the credit card was maxed out. Like it was like I, I I know that feeling now. I've heard people say stuff like that and I was like, how do you literally get to a point where you, you go to the gas station or you literally don't have a, a way to get money? What did I end up even doing? I don't even remember what I did. I think I ended up like putting that $1 in the car or yeah. something or it was like 2 or $3 or something. Cause I was like, I have to get home. And I think it kind of piggybacks off our last video. If you missed it, go check it out. But maybe I want to say maybe that same point in time or something, we had something on Facebook market get Venmoed over or something Dang, for 40 so bucks or something like that. It was just one of those coincidental time, perfect timing scenarios. It's happened several times when it's like, what are we going to do? And then something that's been sitting on the market that we've had on the, on the market for several months, all of a sudden sells and gets directly deposited yeah. and gets cash. Uh, we go meet them and get cash or they can pick it up. But kind of like what Katie was saying with Dave Ramsey, for instance, he had everything going for him. And it's again, saying something from the last vlog cast. And we started to get this house and then the adpocalypse hit and we were like, oh crap, what are we gonna do? How are we gonna make this work? We're still gonna make it work. And we're gonna get into all that about how we still made it work. You have that kind of relief feeling, I guess you could say. Like, okay, we did it. We're in this house that we thought we wanted back in the day. But with all of that, especially doing it the way we did and getting ourselves in a pickle dick, um, like Dave says, Murphy comes to visit and his cousin's dumb, stupid, and whatever mm -hmm. come and visit. And literally this past year, or this past six months even, everything, I don't know if y'all followed in the vlogs or on my Instagram with the air conditioning going out and everything that, it not was, everything, it could have been a lot worse. No, it could have, yeah. But like all these little bitty things, kind of like on the last thing we talked about, every all these little tic tac tic tac things add up and take time away from investing in yourself and spending more money to get fixed starts happening. Just like, God, well, it, really, was, it, just... it was like little things and it was almost every time I was taking a lesson from it, like I started to realize like, is God showing me that some yeah. of these things that are a luxury that I don't actually have to have. Like I learned to have to function without going to get my hair done because right. we couldn't afford it. And then it was it was things like my Apple Watch randomly out of the blue broke mm -hmm. and that was something that brought me joy and whatever and it ended up down the road it was ended up being a warranty thing but I went I didn't have it for like 3 or 4 months. The golf cart, the um the air conditioning. Cart, no, 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 air conditioning. I feel no. like there were Several, I'm trying to think of other things. The washing machine. Oh, the washing machine started having issues. And I know y'all are like, yeah, yeah, and life things go wrong. But just at the timing and with the way things were going, it was like, it was like we were, this is we expected. were trying to get this back is... on track. And every time we like were mentally there, something would set, there would be a setback of something that would just like get you derailed. You'd be like mentally focused on something, and then all of a sudden, Emma gets attacked oh, yeah. by yeah, a doll, and you know, and it's just like, we didn't have $1,000 to spend on that, you yeah. know, like, 
Well, in the air conditioning, we didn't have the money to spend, so you fixed it, and you know, like spent hours, hours researching that. When I, I'm not an AC guy, but two weeks without air in order, like while we were getting our house ready to sell yeah, in the heat of the, the summer, heat of the summer, and we're like sweating and dying of heat. But we in a weekend, we were like, we can live. We're without, like, this is fine. This is, like, we're like, not, de we're not dead. I'm, we're here. I'm, I'm good with 78 degrees, 80 degrees in this house right now. I got a fan. I'm mm -hmm. thankful for this fan that I can sit in front of right now. Right. And it, it kind of taught us to realize, kind of like you don't know what you have till it's gone. Mm -hmm. And definitely things could have been worse, but there were so many things that it was like, we had to experience life without them for a minute. Then it was on the verge of like, just not even, I don't know. Yeah. I feel like that's where we kind of are with like our house and everything else right yeah. now too. The longer this process goes as far as like realizing how dumb we were. <laughs> I know y'all are saying, don't beat yourself up. Don't beat yourself up in the comments. We've all been there. The more angry I am even being here. Like, I love the house and I love the, I mean, I don't, I, I don't love the house at all, actually. It's I, a great house. It's, it's a not great that, house. It's not that we don't love the action. It, it's it's <sighs> a really, I'm trying to appreciate living in it. Cause I'm like, it's a beautiful, fabulous house. It, the, when the AC went out, she was complaining about freezing the night before. Literally it, it was the like, night before, I was like, God, God said, so cold She's like, here. I'm so cold, turn the air off. And then psh, God said, okay. The next morning we woke up and the air wasn't working. I was like, I will never complain about stuff again. Yeah, yeah. And I like, was like the kids, The kids get on your nerves, you're like, I, I'm, I'm just not gonna complain don't about complain it. Don't complain about the kids, don't complain about the kids. But like, <laughs> even when it doesn't go wrong, I walk her, just having to walk to go change shirts for this video, I'm like, I don't wanna have to walk all the way back there. This house is too damn big. Like, but I'm not complaining about it. God, if you heard like, that, Thank you for at least a yeah. reason <laughs> while we're trying to sell it, that we're not getting but kicked out yet. It just gives me that like, bitter like, oh, like I don't like it. I, I'm just ready to be it's done. It's kind of like when you get senioritis, yeah. and then all of a sudden, like your school and your friends and your teachers and everything get on your nerves, and you just like are just so over it. You know, it's that same feeling. But mm. anyways, we're very thankful that we are able to be in this house right now. Um, we there are so many things we love about this house, and so I'm trying to as much as I'm just like bitter at myself. It's the buyer's remorse. You start to like hate the thing that you're having to pay for. Um, I'm just trying to appreciate it. And did the lights just flicker? It. Or did it, like, did y'all see that? I don't know. Did you just? Something just flickered in my watch. Uh, somebody tweeted something, but like, I swear, okay. <sighs> that was weird. Okay. Maybe you blinked too hard. Maybe so. <laughs> I don't have my lenses in. <laughs> Whoa, that was weird. Sorry. <laughs> what we said we were going to talk about today is we're going to give y'all some numbers. I don't even know the numbers. Like she, like we said, she's the math person. I don't even know how to log into the bank account, just to be honest. I mean, I do now. I get. No, I don't know. Don't. I, don't. I mean, and it's not like intentionally that I, I think I've told you before. I'm like, hey, you need to know this if I die. Right. And you're like, okay, y'all remember that. And I don't ever save passwords for stuff like that because you don't want your bank password saved. That's weird. You know? As we've said, we have some debt that is, okay, so we have like credit card debt, things we owe to people for like things that have been done for us, uh, the car, um, different things like that. But then we also have our house that we owe on. So that is hopefully that part of it is going to be paid off. But I think it's interesting to tell the entire number that includes the house mm -hmm. and all of that other debt. So we've told the car, the car and finance stuff, and that we still owed thirty thousand nine hundred dollars on that. We're going to break it down, but the overall total of the entire debt that we owe is that number right there. The total, including the house. Wait, what? What were you expecting it to be higher or lower? I'm expecting there to be a whole number missing out of there. Like, did you type, is that one extra five right there? No. So the total amount of debt in general is- I was thinking, oh, uh, wait. This counts the house, what we owe on the oh, house. Oh, it counts it. I mean, I we've thinking, already paid some of the house, but I'm including the house and we owe still on our house this much. Oh, that's what you're Someone saying. Someone break oh, down, okay, but I'm okay, saying okay. total, including the house okay. and all of our like purchase okay. debt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm thinking total minus the mortgage payment. It's like how okay. Would well, you want to do that first then? How much debt we owe aside from the house, and then total yeah. it all together? Yeah, yeah. How what Dave would do? Okay. Like your total debt minus the mortgage, and then do the total. Again. All right. So the total money that we owe at this point, not counting our mortgage, we're going to just tell you aside from the mortgage and then we'll put that in, is rounded a little bit. Is I kind of rounded these numbers. stuff? 
Yes, I just got it that day. And like I know some people will be like one thousand two hundred thirty-two dollars and forty-two cents. I just I just rounded a dollar or two up because I just didn't want it. I didn't even couldn't even get that specific. Um, Eighty-six thousand dollars is the total that we have to like when we sell our house. That'll be one thing because the mortgage will be paid by the purchase of our house. But mm -hmm. what we actually physically ourselves have to find the money to pay back is eighty six thousand um, dollars. And so that's a lot. That's a lot. That is, and not to be, it, it's hard not to compare when you hear that, especially when you hear the callers call in on the Dave Ramsey show and all that, and they're like, "We have four hundred thousand dollars in debt," and it's just like, yeah. like I couldn't even imagine. But still, for but this is us, coming from somebody who. For, yeah, to like within two years, rack this up. And our credit card, I think I mentioned in the first one, we had a credit card from the very beginning that we only used to buy gas because we got like cash back for buying gas and it was literally paid off at the end of every month because it was like $40, $50 and I would pay it off. The limit on that credit card was $5,000. And I thought that was like huge. I was like, oh my gosh, we have to be careful. Like we don't want to rack this up. The limit on our business card that we got in 2016 is $38,000. And they make $5,000 credit card limits for a reason. Like yeah. I wish that card had a lower limit. Yeah. And we wouldn't, I mean, it's not their responsibility. It's like, oh, like, yeah, it goes back to the whole how, why, what? But so counting the house, if you put the house in there yeah. with it, um, cause the house is what we're going to talk about today. Okay. We're not going to, I don't think oh, yeah, get into yeah. all that stuff. Okay. But when you add the house in with it, our total amount owed across the entire board, counting everything, the house, the car, whatever, $635,540. Is the amount so hopefully a massive amount of that will be paid off when we sell our house hopefully we do sell our house like that's just a whole nother situation but I guess we kind of wanted to get into talking about what we spent on our house why we did and what like don't <sighs> what is Dave Ramsey's rule on buying a house 15 year fixed 15 year fixed mortgage. Paid for with cash. Well, of Money. course that's great. But he his thing is 15 year fixed mortgage with the mortgage payment being no more than 25% of your take home pay, okay? So in that example, your take home pay in a month is $1,000. Bring home $1,000 in your paycheck. Your mortgage payment should be no more than $250 a month. Which that's kind of a weird example. I guess you should say like if your monthly take home pay is $10,000, your mortgage payment should be no more than $2,500 mm -hmm. would be 25% of that. So you should take that into account. So that may mean for some people buying a, say a $400,000 house, but you're able to make a $200,000 down payment. So you only get a loan for the $200,000. So then your amount you're paying on your mortgage payment isn't on the four hundred thousand right. dollar house, it's on the two hundred thousand dollars. So yeah. that's why you want to save up for a down payment on a house, so that your loan is lower. Obviously, his first recommendation is to completely pay cash for mm -hmm. a house. The other recommendation for Dave Ramsey is to not buy a house if you have any debt. Any debt. Pay off all your debt first, which technically I don't really think we had. I could go back and look at the credit card statement. Uh, but I don't think we really had debt. That's what I was saying. Well, is, we had the car. Well, we had we the had car. Just we just bought the, bought the car. car. But that's what I was saying. Is like just bouncing off our last video. It's two years ago. I had fifty five thousand dollars in savings. Fifty two thousand dollars in savings. Fifty two thousand dollars in savings, and in a two year period, flipped that upside down and added thirty six thousand dollars to that. Well, and it's on the, on the negative side. We would have previously looked at. <laughs> at it and been like you know we <laughs> have this debt on the car so we shouldn't buy a house but because of what we talked about in previous videos about being mm -hmm. advised to do that for the business so for our personal side when you're not looking at the business because that was business debt mm -hmm. on the business we personally didn't have any debt in our personal name you know mm -hmm. I don't think we did if we no, we didn't have any debt at all, other yeah, than right. well, our house. Our house, yeah. And on our house at the time, we owed one hundred and 
$76,000 was what we owed on our house. And it's just crazy, like looking at that now, I'm like, if we had stayed at that house with the amount of money we were making and everything else, we literally could have paid off our house. Mm -hmm. And we could have a completely paid for house. The good news from all of that, well, I don't know if it's good news or not because it allowed us to buy this house, is that we got a really good deal when we bought the house because the people we bought from, it was like a relocation deal. Mm -hmm. And so the price was way lower than what it should have been. So we had great equity in the house and we ended up making, I think $70,000 on the sale of our house. Sale. So that helped a lot on the... So when we sold Next our house, sale. we had $70,000 to put towards a down payment on this house that we bought. So you would think like, oh, that's great. Even if you're upgrading to like a $300,000 house, you're still gonna get about an equivalent-ish, only a little bit more mortgage because mm -hmm. then you've got 70,000. <laughs> How did we even get approved for this house? Or why did you I'm approve about us? To tell you. Why did you approve us? Don't approve stupid people. So we I joke about it all the time. I'm like, can we just move back to our old house? Yeah. Like, can any if you if the yeah, if y'all are watching, can we move back in with y'all? I think it, looking at how much we paid and how much our loan was, I think considering closing costs and all that, we only used about forty five thousand dollars of what we made on our house to put down for the down payment. Mm -hmm. Some of it went to like closing costs or to moving expenses, and I don't, I'm, I don't know. That's twenty five thousand extra dollars. Where'd that go? Maybe it did go to the house, and I'm just calculating something wrong. Yeah. I have no idea. Our balance was $13,000. So, I mean, that was still a lot, but it wasn't what it is now. I'm just, I'm just trying to figure out, like, where did it go wrong? Because I feel like when we first got the credit card, we weren't spending. I mean, we had only bought it, gotten it in 2016. Our very first statement, we ended up with $4,500. And, I mean, I feel like we probably... This is the first time we'd had it. I feel like we probably paid it off. Let's see. Probably. Yeah, we paid the whole thing off. And at then Christmas. It was yeah, it was all that Christmas stuff. And mm -hmm. then look, I paid off exactly that amount. Four thousand five hundred and forty eight dollars and seventy eight cents. Apple store stuff, right? And that kind of goes to show you too, like the amount of money we were making that was like way above basically including our mortgage and all of our other lifestyle stuff, we still had this money over top that if we'd have been freaking smart, we would yeah. have invested or saved or whatever. So it wasn't until, I guess, like 2000, that that held in a handbasket period. I saw somebody comment and something I forgot to mention in a couple previous videos <laughs> was all the miscarriages and then the baby and then the postpartum and then the other babies and then the everything else but then something i forgot to mention was my dad was living with us too and then he passed away as well so there was a literally and my grandmother passed away the year before yeah no that two, was in the same year. october of 2014 then your dad passed away in march of 2015. so yeah i mean there was a lot of stuff happening in our lives that you know at the time you're just kind of rolling with the punches it's just crazy to see to see the numbers and like to see all this so oh man we're just crazy um we kind of addressed some of this in the previous video but we were asked questions about like so why did you you know was it because all your friends were buying houses and blah blah, blah. we addressed all that i'm not gonna get go into that it. again go watch that but there was a question and a comment of like why did you choose to upgrade your house so much like to get such a bigger house. For one, we did think we wanted to, have, wanted to have kids. For two, the house that we're living in now that we bought is very, very close to my sister's house. And the neighborhood that we're living in, ever since we've been married, my sister and her husband have lived here. They were always like, oh my gosh, you have to move to our neighborhood. We love our neighborhood, it's so great. And we always, just because people are different and have different opinions and preferences mm -hmm. we were always like no we don't ever want to move into that neighborhood it's the type of neighborhood where you're like way far back in to get to your house you know it takes like almost 10 minutes to get out to the main road and we were just like i hate that drive yeah. every day too even more now like i was saying about the house stuff go mm -hmm. ahead sorry but we'd always said like no we don't you know we just we don't want to live back there those aren't the type of houses we like in general and then it's like the more and more time that we would spend with them or we would come over here and you know they were obviously wanting us to live closer because it's my sister and we have kids Similar Built -in ages, babysitters, you know, just all the stuff. Houses down. I mean, maybe, like, maybe it's nice and it is pretty back there, and you know, yada yada. And then when this house came available, I remember she actually texted me about this house like 
several months before we even were looking to move. And I was like, mm -mm, nope, definitely not. Like looked at the pictures online, nope, that's not the house we want, not looking at it. She was like, but it's really nice. Well, and it sounds like we're pointing fingers and blaming it again, but we're, uh, it's just like, we were so mentally vulnerable that like right. the persuasion of any outside influence of any kind, we were likely to pick up right. on. You know, like and I'm, yeah, who wouldn't no. want to persuade their family to move closer? Yeah, you know, like, I think, I mean, I think that happens a lot of times yeah. with friends or family or whatever. And so, yeah, I'm definitely not pointing fingers. <laughs> Nobody held a gun to my head and said I had to buy this, or we had to buy this house. Yeah. Um, not pointing fingers, also not making excuses. I've said this in previous videos. We're explaining our story. Keeping We're not making real. excuses. We're just letting y'all know, you know, about everything. We even drove up in the driveway of this house one night and we were on our way to their house mm -hmm. and we were just like, we even went to their house and we were like, no, definitely just, it's not, it doesn't feel right. Finally, I don't even remember, they like realist, took it off the market and relisted it or something and we were like, oh, maybe, well, okay, fine, we'll just go look at it. Mm -hmm. We'll just go look at it and see what we think. And we were like, oh my God it's really pretty like it's not what it looks like online it's great which i'm hoping it's gonna happen with <laughs> so whoever is looking at our it's house and hasn't bought it open like the cosmetic the bones were there you know mm -hmm. like for there were a few little cosmetic things we wanted to change but in general it was out of our budget a little bit but as we've also said previously our growth in income was like on this but on this trajectory. Mm -hmm. We had also mentioned previously that as we're making money on YouTube, literally the couple weeks after we had made an offer, our offer had been accepted and we had gotten our loan processing for this house, the adpocalypse happened, which is when a bunch of advertisers backed out of YouTube and our income on YouTube literally got cut in half. And there was nothing we could do about that. It, our views were still the same. Everything was still the same. It was just a Kept waking up every morning and it was just like, and the trajectory like, was the like this. And what the crap is going on? And then it's like, well, things will turn around, everything will be fine. Like, just continue believing in the process. And, you know, things did turn around some, but it just, that's a whole different scenario. We convinced ourselves that it was going to be fine. I remember being at the beach on spring break on the phone with the loan mortgage people kind of panicking, like, you know, I just am not sure. Like our income is is actually going down, and that's a whole other process or hard thing to do if you're in your own small business, especially with what we do. Explaining what we do and how we have lulls in certain months based on the time of year, I guess. Like, well, in uh, any like commission based type business or yeah. freelance type thing, it's kind of hard to explain. But I, you know, they see proof of everything over time. And well, and we had those. just incorporated our business. Yeah. It hadn't even been a, it had just been a year and you have to have had your small business as a, like an incorporated LLC or whatever for two years with the loan process. Like there was just a lot of stuff that, it wasn't the right time to make no. the decision that we made. We forced it to Literally, work. Literally the amount that we were needing to finance to buy this house that we were like, it's a little bit out of our budget, but we can make it work. We'll eat ramen noodles every night just so that we can make it work. And it technically worked in our budget that we weren't even writing out, but our budget, mm -hmm but that didn't leave any extra. Like we were gonna have enough to pay the bills and we'd have like a couple hundred dollars extra, but that doesn't leave money for like an emergency to happen. That doesn't leave money for the fact that we were spending $959 on a chair out of the blue. Yeah, we literally like maxed out. Our lady was like, you know, this actually isn't going through the financing portion. You're not gonna be able to get approved for the whole amount that you need to buy the house. And I was like, Oh crap, well, what are we gonna do? And you know, at this point, if you've ever bought a house, you're so emotionally invested. Yeah, you've gone, through, you've all gone the, through all of it. Every all the paperwork and stuff, and you're like, we're gonna have to figure out like, like they they've gone through the the loan mm -hmm. processing people have gone through everything too, and they're gonna like try to do anything they can to make it work. They don't wanna have to do all that footwork for nothing. And anybody who knows anything at this point in the video is like, well, this is when you should have known. This was like the final straw. Yeah, you should like go somewhere else. And when you find yourself going like, okay, we can't tell anybody <laughs> about what is going on right now. We can't let anybody know that we're about to make a decision on further loans and everything else. Basically, she got on the corner and we were able to make it. I'm just kidding. So yeah. you have to sell yourself, no. <laughs> but so our loan lady is like, well, we actually have this great thing, which I didn't even, not her fault, I didn't ask enough questions. I didn't even realize what it was, but she was like, there's a way that I can get you a loan, a second loan for the remainder 
of what you owe on this house. And I was like, really, that would be great. And I was like, but this sounds like something that Dave Ramsey would say, like, this isn't good. And she's like, no, I mean, I'm not, again, not blaming her. I'm pretty sure she probably explained it to me and told me all the risks. It was basically, the second part of the loan was a home equity line of credit, which I didn't realize that that's kind of, that, I think that's what people get if you like wanna renovate something in your house. You get a loan on the equity you have in your house. You paid off so much. Right, right. You get a loan on that amount or from that amount or something like that. I didn't realize that it was something weird. Like I just thought it was part of like a mortgage loan, and then but it's she, not. She, she talked it up though. I mean, she's, that's her job. Like, you right. know, she, she, she sold it to you and you were again vulnerable in a vulnerable committed state. And then she probably worded it to well, the, the way, extent of like, and then you just pay that one off first and then you'd well, be Well, I have no idea right. how those loans typically work, but this one was <sighs> an interest only loan. So for 15 years or for 10 years, you're making interest only payments, which like, even hearing that, I was like, what? I, I believe I've heard that this is like really bad. Like, you shouldn't do this. <laughs> Sorry, Dave. So you're like, Dave Ramsey would be like punching us in the face. Oh. So it was interest only, but she was like, but that doesn't mean you have to pay interest only. Like, I want you to look at this and calculate what your mortgage payment would be to make sure that it's paid off by the end of the 10 years. So you calculate that and make sure you can afford that. I mean, she was giving me mm -hmm. the advice of like, she's telling me don't just pay the interest or mm -hmm. you're gonna be screwed at the end of 10 years because yeah. you're still gonna have the amount of the loan due. And so as we calculated it, I was like, okay, this is fun. We'll just make sure that we pay not just the interest, but we mm -hmm. pay the amount that we'll need to pay. And so she gave me like a whole worksheet of how much we would need to pay. So that's what we ended up doing. And it's like literally just, embarrassing because i'm like i can't i'm like short of breath i'm like <laughs> like we knew we weren't How supposed to do that happen? we knew we weren't supposed to do that so the i mean i guess we just say uh, like when people call dave ramsey they say how much you owe on your house well this is what we owe on our house right yeah, isn't that what you do yeah. just still feels weird telling all these numbers so the amount of the loan the big loan which it ended up being a regular loan I don't know, or was it a jumbo loan? I don't even know about loans. I don't even know. I was just like, we want to buy this. It was like a jumbo we double dutch. Was... Jumbo double dutch loan or <laughs> we something? We were basically just jump roping. Yeah. So the big loan was 540000 Is that right? Or 520000 I don't even know. We got approved for a $540,000 loan. $540,000 loan. Like, why did y'all do that to us? Why did, you, <laughs> why did you approve that? Like, don't do that. And then the second loan was for $55,000. <sighs> Like they'll, they'll basically approve you for anything at the end of the day. Like, I mean, not necessarily, but obviously looking at our story and our situation, like you can get approved for anything if that's the road you want to go down, but don't do that because that's dumb. Like they can figure out ways to get you approved for stuff. But right. in, I mean, looking at houses that we've looked at since we bought this one, or like as we've been looking to move or whatever, we're like, oh my gosh, these this house that we love so much more, this is our style, this is like the neighborhood where we wanted to be, this is all this stuff, like, wow. was like $200,000 cheaper than this house. Like, That's another thing that sucks or hurts, gut punches me, is like just seeing the more updated, more our style, more the, our feel, brand new, everything that we've, wanted in in a transition from the last house to this the next house is just like it hurts so bad to see that that's that two hundred thousand dollars less and our mortgage payment wouldn't have changed at all and we wouldn't have murphy's law joining us for dinner every day but we also wouldn't have grown as people yeah. the way we have and i do believe that every struggle they go through is for a reason and it sucks like really bad and i know there's so many of y'all that are commenting and are like just know that you're gonna look back on this and be like oh man that was that time in our life when blah 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 you know if you've been in it that all you're seeing is yourself and your kids living in a cardboard box on the side of the road and like i laugh but it's kind of not even funny because you see it as being like your entire future is mm -hmm. you're never going to be out of debt. You're always going to be struggling and there's no way you're ever going to get out of this feeling well, trapped, trapped. Yes. I've used that word so much, lately. so much, especially like, with having trouble selling our house right now is like, and the games that people play <sighs> when they try to sell, buy your house or want to buy it. I don't know. It's just like the mental strain on top of everything else is just hurtful. And I think it's more hurtful because I, you get to the point, and if 
any of y'all watching are to that point, then you know what I'm talking about. But like, you're just so mad at yourself that you don't want it to ever happen again. Yeah. And then you have to like dig out of it. And which is why you have I guess to get I can mad. See, like how frustrated I am at least, or we are like just <laughs> why. I just get asked that every day, like, why are we here? Like, like I hate the drive, why? I hate... And it's, it literally is nobody's fault but our own. Like, I don't want anybody to think I'm pointing fingers at oh, anybody. No, no, it's our own But, it's, it's just, it's kind of like I said, too, when you're around people that, who knows how they're paying for things, if they're doing it the right way or the wrong way or whatever, it doesn't matter. You're influenced by that, whether mm -hmm. they're intentionally influencing you or not. It's hard to not just kind of get caught up in it. But so basically what we owe right now on our house, um, so that was what our loans were originally for. On our larger loan, we owe $493,899.24. So basically like $494,000. The second loan, it's interest only. Okay, so here's the deal. Let me just tell you, because I was like, we're gonna be paying more than just the interest. It was all auto, auto drafted mm -hmm. out of our, because if we signed up for a checking account at the bank that we had the loan with, and did auto draft, we would get a discount in our um, percentage interest rate or whatever on the loan, which is huge when you got a loan that big. We did that, and so we had been depositing the amount of paying like interest and then some to pay off the loan in time. And then I realized later they were only drafting out the interest portion, so that other money was just sitting there, which to some extent has been beneficial as we haven't been able to pay our mortgage or like we've had like mm -hmm. low funds. So, so a lot of that money has been used to kind of cover the mortgage we could have pay so basically we still owe the entire amount of that loan which will hopefully be paid off by what we sell our house for uh oh this is the school hold on hmm. we're in the new office now okay so coming through you can come in yes the same way you did but just go don't worry about where we are okay got it okay thank you. okay thanks bye uh -huh. like we've been saying like random things will just happen we just got a call that brooks just threw up at school and he has never thrown up before i'm kind of yeah. worried I know. about He's how like, he reacted well, and she said he doesn't seem sick anymore but like well yeah he threw up and we weren't even there with him when he threw up for his first time well, it's like a christening or something i'm like oh my god so, um, so anyway we're gonna end there I guess. Wait, well, so we'll we uh, i need to we'll get back on track i needed to and we're gonna end it i'm gonna bring him home put him to sleep for a nap and i've just got a few more things to say right. on our decision on buying versus renting oh and all that stuff. Okay, let me Oh my gosh. Uh, I gotta pee. Can we uh, even afford <laughs> medicine? <sighs> okay. Okay, Brooks well, is home real life. and napping. Got him up in his bed, um, but we were about to wrap this up anyway. He may hear him in the background on the monitor. Keep an eye on him. Um, he should be okay. He didn't have a fever or anything. He's yeah. acting fine, so I have no idea why he randomly threw up at school. Oh, that was interesting. The only thing I had left to say is that when we first put our house on the market in July, oh, you switch glasses. <laughs> when we first put our house on the market in July, our plan was to sell our house and turn around and buy a new, way less expensive house, obviously. Now that we've become more aware of everything and just kind of like become in the world of like, what in the world are we doing? We're looking at it going, we would be dumb to buy, purchase another house, to spend, to go into more debt to buy another house even if it's within the budget as far as yeah. the, the mortgage payment. We realized that we were like, what would Dave Ramsey would be like, no, you have all this debt. Don't go buy another house. So basically what we think we've decided we need to do is take the money that we make from selling our house, hopefully, <laughs> and pay off as much of the debt as we can. Oh, I thought you were gonna say sell the kids. That too, sell them, sell the dogs, <laughs> sell the, all of it. Try to get the debt done and rent something for however long it takes to build back up our savings in order to have a down payment on a house. So basically starting over from scratch. We were so hesitant on that at first. We were like, but I mean, if we're getting this money back from the sale of our house, why wouldn't we just use it as a down payment and yeah. then have a smaller mortgage and all that. And I even, you listened to the podcast, yeah, yeah. Dave Ramsey, and he was like, you're just inviting problems in. Mm -hmm. Everything went wrong, yeah. You're stuck in a mortgage, you haven't paid off any of your debt, and you're still struggling, like your income is nothing because you're having to make all these payments to these credit people. I had that epiphany one and I was like, well, but if we rent something for the same cost as our mortgage, why is that any different? And then I heard on the podcast, well, because- then, Dave Ramsey's podcast. Yeah, because then you're, you own the house, you're the landlord, essentially. But if you're renting, then you're not, anything breaks it's not your responsible for responsibility, it. Responsibility, so. which of course you could say well if you buy a newer house or when you get a house there's a home warranty but 
that one doesn't cover everything. Two, there's deductibles and stuff with that. He also mentioned you're gonna be paying higher taxes. You're gonna be paying closing costs to close mm -hmm. on a new house. You're gonna be paying like the house we were wanting to move in that we lost the contract on. We were gonna have to add a small fence, like a portion mm -hmm. of a fence. There would be expenses like that when you move in. Yeah. And initially we had thought, well, we'll use the money from some more of the money that we make on the house to to do those little things. We could and just not sell the Suburban and then live in the Suburban. That's a great idea. RV life, yeah. anybody? New go. new concept for the channel? <laughs> so it's kind of our plan right now going forward, but we'll see what happens. I mean, unless something major changes, I can't imagine it would. That's fine. Yeah! So unfortunately, we're not looking right now at buying houses. We're looking at somewhere to rent, which there's some great rental options in the area we want to be in. Yeah. So. We'll be fine. And this dog won't stop messing with us. Whenever She's like, the kids come done. home, the dogs get crazy. So. Uh, thank you all so much for watching this series of the yes. vlog cast. We, we still have <laughs> we still have stuff to talk about on We're this gonna vlog We're going to start getting um, application oriented, I think you're saying too. Like yeah, showing the yeah, envelopes yeah. and getting uh, telling her money where to go and getting all that situated. It's so hard to like spit it all out that it's yeah. taken a minute. I'm like, can we say this? Oh, oh it's yeah. hard. Leave a comment below, let us know, uh, yeah, what kind of story you have to tell and what kind of financial struggle you're in and it's how you plan to get out in 2020, let's go. Or how you already have. It's encouraging to hear those stories too. <laughs> Thanks for watching. See you later, Bye. Bye.